Hello Grade 12s and welcome to the Answer Series Life Sciences videos based on our study guides. If you don't have our Grade 12 Life Sciences books parts 1 and 2, you'll still be able to follow these lessons. This video forms part of the module on evolution, specifically evolution by natural selection and we'll be looking at origin of ideas about origins. Origin and development of life on Earth has always been a great source of speculation. Many scientists support the theory that life on Earth arose from one common ancestor billions of years ago, and that evolution occurred, one kind of organism changing into another. Evolutionists believe this process led to immense biodiversity on planet Earth. Note, this evolutionary theory does not propose an explanation for the origin of life, but the origin of species. We'll look at some definitions as an introduction to this topic. Evolution is described as change over time. Whether this change over time is in cell phones, skyscrapers, aeroplanes, cars or fashion, it's change over time in things. Biological evolution, on the other hand, is change over time in living things. And in the definition, we see six different things. Biological evolution refers to genetic changes in a population that are inherited over generations, due to natural selection and may eventually result in the formation of new species. If we look at this definition, note it requires genetic changes. These are changes in the genes, changes in the DNA, the genes on the DNA. The changes are caused by mutations in the DNA. Because they're in the DNA, they can be transferred to the offspring and inherited over generations. Biological evolution does not refer to changes in individuals, but changes in populations. What is a population? There are six things to remember in the definition of a population. A population is a group of similar organisms of the same species, living in a particular area at a particular time, with the ability to interbreed or reproduce and produce fertile or viable offspring. Note biological evolution also relies on the mechanism of natural selection. Natural selection is when nature determines which organisms are better adapted and which organisms are not. The better adapted organisms survive and pass on their favorable traits or characteristics to their offspring. Different traits are beneficial or favorable in this environment. Muted colors may be better camouflaged so they can avoid predation. A bigger tail fin may increase the chances of escaping a predator or catching a prey for food. But a mutation that causes a brightly colored mark may be spotted by a predator and in this case it would be an unfavorable trait. Different traits may be favorable in different environments like size or color or shape or patterns or resistance to cold or infection or drought. Let's go back to our definition. We also note that biological evolution may result in the formation of new species. This is known as speciation. What is a species? It's a man-made definition and it refers to a group of organisms with the ability to interbreed and produce fertile or viable offspring. So the theory of evolution proposes an explanation of how one species gives rise to new species over long periods of time. There are two types of biological evolution. Number one, macroevolution, and number two, we talk about microevolution. Both of these rely on the mechanism of natural selection, as well as mutations, as well as gene flow. Macroevolution is big evolution. Macroevolution refers to the development of new life forms or species from earlier species over generations. So speciation forms the basis of macroevolution over time. Macroevolution is not always directly observable. It's sometimes observed for ex in history, for example, in the fossil record, where the formation of fossils cannot be repeated in a scientific investigation as long time periods are required for these favorable mutations and natural selection. Examples of macroevolution may include the development of unicellular organisms to multicellular organisms, or from reptiles to birds, or in this case, the evolution of whales and cows and hippos from one common four-legged land-living ancestor. The skeleton of any common ancestor 
must then undergo changes to form each of the species over time so that they are adapted to their own environments. These changes are all based on favorable mutations and natural selection. So macroevolution always involves change between species, from species X to species Y, for example, by speciation. In this case, the species Y individuals cannot interbreed with individuals from species X. They cannot produce fertile offspring and they cannot interbreed. Macroevolution can also be seen in a phylogenetic tree. This is a special branch diagram that shows evolutionary relationships between different organisms. Each point of branching indicates a common ancestor and a point of speciation. For example, if we follow the ancestry of this house mouse over here, and we follow it back and we follow the golden hamster all the way back. The two of them have a common ancestor at this point. In contrast, microevolution is change or variation that occurs within a species. There are smaller changes that occur in the genotypes of the species. These changes are passed on to the offspring. And in this example here of Buckley's tree frogs, we see variation within a species, a particular color or a particular size or pattern or shape or function may give the individual an advantage for survival. The gene is passed on to their offspring and a favorable gene will always increase in frequency in a population. So microevolution always shows variation within a species. How do we know if organisms are part of one species? When organisms are still able to interbreed and produce viable or fertile offspring, they're considered one species. Examples of microevolution Variation in dogs or in horses or in viruses that show resistance to antiretrovirals or in bacteria that show resistance to antibiotics or in weeds or pests that show resistance to herbicides or pesticides. Evolutionary scientists believe that many microevolutionary changes over time can accumulate and eventually form macroevolution and the formation of new species, like this type D killer whale was recently rediscovered and proposed as a new species by some scientists. Now we look at two basic scientific concepts, a hypothesis and a theory. A hypothesis is sometimes called an informed or educated assumption or a guess. It provides a solution to a problem or a question. It explains phenomena a specific phenomenon, and it's based on evidence and observations. It can be tested in experiments, and it is either rejected or it's accepted. So a hypothesis forms part of scientific investigation. As we can see in this flow diagram over here, you'll find more info on hypotheses and scientific investigation in the summary at the front of your study guide. Let's look at the summary of hypothesis. Hypothesis is a proposal or a suggestion to explain observations. So it's an informed assumption. It predicts the outcome of an investigation. It's not a question, but it answers an investigative question like, if you feed a chicken with more protein, will it lay more eggs? The hypothesis is not the question. It's the statement that explains the question. It's a proposed solution to the investigative question. It involves repeated observations, and a hypothesis is always proposed before testing and research is done. So it must still be tested to prove true or false. And it focuses on a specific investigation and explains a specific phenomenon or observation. A hypothesis always involves both variables. For example, the higher the protein content of chicken feed, the higher the egg production, where we have the dependent on the y-axis and we have the independent on the x-axis. The dependent on the y-axis is what we measure. In this case, we are measuring the number of eggs on the y-axis. The independent variable on the x-axis is what we manipulate or we control as the investigator. And in this case, we are controlling the protein content of the chicken feed. This hypothesis will then be rejected if it's false or accepted if it's true. 
A theory, on the other hand, is an explanation or an interpretation of many hypotheses. So it's a well-substantiated explanation that makes sense of a natural phenomenon. It's based on scientific evidence. It can be tested and confirmed by independent researchers. It can be changed, developed, or replaced. And evolution is an example of a theory. Let's look at the summary, including both of them. In a theory, it's an idea that provides explanations of observations. It provides interpretations of observations. It's a broad-based explanation rather than specific, and it may include many different hypotheses. A theory explains ideas that have been tested and verified over time. It should be supported by evidence from different sources and independent researchers. As more observations and facts become available, so it can change accordingly. For example, cell theory or Darwin's theory of evolution. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. So that's it for now from The Answer Series, your key to exam success.